All right, so today I'm gonna to help you figure out how you can measure bacteria growth from your dish. And I'd say the very first thing you need to have is a really good picture, a close-up picture of your dish. Try not to have too many uh, glares on there or a flash that maybe adds some shining spots to the image. Uh, but a good picture will definitely save you a lot of trouble. And basically what we're going to be doing with this is, actually let me draw you a quick picture here. Uh, um, kind of imagine that you have a dish that is a circle. So there's your circular dish and there's certain bacteria growth that might be in here in various odd forms. So the kind of method that I use to try to measure how much bacteria growth has occurred is basically by calculating the percentage of the dish that uh, contains some form of growth. So we wanna calculate a percentage of the dish, that means we're gonna need two pieces of information. The first piece of information is gonna be the area of the whole dish. And we're gonna measure this in terms of pixels uh, that make up the image of your dish. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So down here is gonna be the area of the whole dish. And then what we're gonna do is uh, area of dish, there we go. Uh, um, we also are going to want to calculate the area that these various uh, sort of bacterial colonies takes up on the dish. So there's a colony here, there's a colony here, and there's a colony there. And once we calculate the total area of these three colonies, the measurement of bacteria growth, which is going to be whatever the area of the colonies are, so for area of colonies up here, uh, uh, divided by whatever the area of the dish is. So that's the basic idea. Now, practically speaking, sometimes, just depending on what your dish looks like, it might be easier, rather than trying to calculate the area of each of these three, uh, each of these three colonies, sometimes it's a little bit easier to instead get the area of all the space between the colonies. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll actually look at it, both different methods using the image that I grabbed. Uh, but either way, it will get you to the right answer because if you can find the area of the space that's in between the colonies, um, then what's true is if you take the area of your whole dish, uh, so area of dish, and you subtract the area kind of between all the different colonies, so area of dish minus the area of the colonies, or let me say area, not the colonies, area of this empty space, I'll just say area of space, then that's gonna give you the area of the, the colonies. So either way works, uh, whether you're calculating the actual area of the colonies, which is what you wanna have, or if you're calculating the area of all of the space between it, you can turn that in to the area of the colonies just with basic subtraction. Uh, a lot of it, again, just depends on the particular image. Uh, the image that I'm gonna share with you, it's actually easier to do the space version of it rather than the actual colonies. But I'll show you how both of them work anyways. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and share uh, Photoshop with you. I don't know how familiar you are with Photoshop, so I'm just gonna kind of assume uh, if you don't have a lot of familiarity with it and just give you what you need to know to be successful in measuring your uh, bacteria colonies. So the very first thing you want to do is load up your image. So if you click on file and then open, you can track down wherever it is you save the images. Now in my case, I just grabbed this image off of uh, the internet and you can see it looks just like that. Now, it's probably pretty likely that your particular uh, your particular image might not look so crisp as this. There might be not quite as uh, pronounced edges on the different colonies. Uh, so it, it can be a little bit trickier for how you might end up doing it. Uh, but I'll let you fight through that battle and just show you an example that's a bit more straightforward like this one. Uh, so what we're going to want to do like I showed you before, is you want to calculate the area of the whole entire dish. And so over here on the far left-hand side, there are a few different tool options. 
And the second one over here, mine shows a little circle. That's the option we want to choose. Now, sometimes when you first load up Photoshop, it might have this rectangle uh, uh, selection tool. If that's what yours shows, then go ahead and hit right click and choose the elliptical marquee tool. And that's what we're going to start with. Uh, and then using this elliptical marquee tool, what we're going to do is we're just going to select the whole entire dish. So this tool makes this sort of dashed, uh, hopefully you can see a little dashed circle on the screen. And what I want to do is try to make a circle that goes all the way around this dish that contains the areas I care about. So this can be a little tricky, but the good thing is with this process that we're doing, it really doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, as long as you're close enough, you'll be okay. Uh, and in this case, my circle looks pretty darn close to what the dish uh, appears like. Maybe I could have done a little bit better on the left side, uh, but I think the area of my circle represents the area of this dish pretty well. So in order to calculate the area, what you're then going to want to do after you have it selected is you click on this image menu at the top and then you scroll down here to where it says analysis and there's this option that says record measurements so we're going to go ahead and click on that record measurements option and what you get down here is a record of the actual measurements actually i can't see all of mine let me expand it a little bit for you. There you go. And the thing that we care most about is actually way over here on the right, there's something that says area. This one says 113,072. So that's the number that I'm going to record for the area of my dish. 113,072, uh, I guess that would be pixel squared. That's the units that we have here. The units really aren't that important here because we're going to be dividing two area measurements. So when we're done, we're going to get something unitless anyway. So there's no reason to try to change the units to anything else. Um, okay, so I've got the area of the whole dish. So once we're done with that, I can just kind of click out of it. And you can see that my selection is now gone. The next part is the part that takes a little bit more work. This is the part where we're going to calculate the area of all of these different little bacteria colonies that are on this dish. And that is a little bit more time consuming, but I'll try to give you the gist of how it works. Um, to do that, we're going to use a different tool. On the far left toolbar, the very the fourth option is this tool called a magic wand tool. Now again, it could be when you're looking at yours, you might see this quick selection tool. Uh, if you do, go ahead and right click and choose the magic wand tool. Basically what the magic wand tool does is it will, when I click somewhere, let me show you by this clicking on this little orange colony in the top right, it's going to attempt to figure out uh, all of the other pixels that are similar to the one that I click on. And it does that off of the basis of the color. So it'll grab up on a similar color. So let me go ahead and click up here. You can see I grabbed a lot of the similar colors, kind of missed out on a few pieces around the edges here, which I'll teach you how to grab those in a moment. Uh, here, this one's probably going to do a perfect job with just because it looks like it's all exactly the same color. Uh, um, so that's the basic idea. This magic wand tool is going to allow us to select these different areas. Oops, I missed. Uh, select these different colonies, uh, which will then calculate the area. Uh, now, a few things to note. Number one, uh, Sometimes when you do this, it might select more than we wanted. Let me try to see if I can get it to get. This picture is actually so great that it's tough for me to get a bad area of this picture. Uh, but at times, I guess I'll just say it and you can discover it on your own. At times when you go to select something, it might select a little bit more than you intended it to. And so up here, there's a measurement called tolerance. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to uh, use this to determine what similar colors are. So for instance, a, a higher number for the tolerance is going to grab up on more pixels similar to the one I click on. So for instance, earlier when I clicked on this one, I didn't get all of the edges of this. Let me show you that again. I'll do 32. 
I didn't get all of the edges of this when I first clicked on it. But if I were to increase this to say 100, you can see that I actually do pick up on all of those edges. Some of that's just kind of playing around with it so you find a number that works. We do want to be careful. If you increase it too far, uh, let me do a 300. This might work here. No, I can't go that far. Two, uh, let's go with 150. If you increase it too far, then it might be, uh, you can't see what happened there. Cancel. Uh, uh, that I end up grabbing a lot more colors than I wanted to. So for instance, if I have it at 125 here on this guy, when I went to click on it, it actually ended up including the whole entire dish. So I was way too high. Uh, a little smaller at 75. Uh, you can see even then, I picked up on a lot of things I didn't want. And that's because this particular colony in the middle, some, the colors are really not that far off from the empty space in between. And so that tool is picking up on those colors and saying, oh, you must want this too. But I really don't. So I'm going to go back to 32. That seems like a pretty safe number. Uh, and I'll show you what we'll then do. So basically, all you'll do is you'll click on a colony. You want to try to make sure that the whole colony is selected. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you want to hold down your Shift button and click on another colony. So I clicked on this one. I hold down my Shift button. I click on another colony. And you can see now I've got both of these two colonies selected. We're going to kind of go through and click on all of these other colonies in a similar manner. Uh, so notice on this one, again, I didn't pick up on the edges like I wanted to when I clicked on it. So I could mess with that tolerance number up there. Or what I like to do is I just hold down shift and I click on that little edge piece. And then it picks up on those parts too. So you're basically just holding down your shift button, clicking on each of these colonies, trying to make sure that you, roughly speaking, have the whole colony selected. And uh, let's see if I can pick up on the edge a little better. Uh, and if you don't pick up on something you want to, just click on the part that's not included, and it'll grab it as well. So we're clicking on all of these little different colonies um, until we get all of the things we want to include selected. Now, on this one, there's a lots of these tiny little dots. Uh, it could be that I just don't care that much about it. Uh, and so I can leave those off, because that's not really going to make up a huge percentage of the area anyways. Uh, but I do want to point out something that will inevitably happen when you go through this process. So suppose you accidentally click on this little dot over here and notice, oh no, I just ruined everything. See how it ended up selecting lots of things that I didn't want. So if that happens, just go ahead and push Control Z on your keyboard and that'll undo the last thing that you did. And so uh, if you do accidentally click in the wrong spot, you don't have to reset everything. Just push Control Z, pick up where you left off. Uh, see, I did it again right there. Uh, so you want to go ahead and grab, at least I did it again. It's getting hard to grab this little tiny spot here. And I got a little bit of it, so we'll take it. Uh, so you want to kind of go through and select as many of these as you can. Again, those little tiny dots, they're not going to make a very big difference in terms of the area, just because the, the number of pixels in here is so large that just five or six of them isn't going to be a significant difference that's going to make you prove or disprove whatever you're trying to prove with your uh, research. Uh -oh. um, but anyways, that's that grabs those things. So then what we're going to want to do, once we have all of those selected, is we're going to click on Image, just like before, go to Analysis, just like before, choose the Record Measurements option, just like before. Uh, and what you'll see is it actually threw tons of different uh, things in this bottom window. But the one that we care about is the very top one. It'll say count 14. That basically means I clicked on 14 different areas. And then again, the number we want is that area number, which in this case is 9,083. And so using that 9,083 number and that original number of 113,072, I'm going to just divide and I get an area of my dish that's covered with these bacterial colonies. And it's really all there is to it, right? You're just going to click on the bacteria colonies, figure out the area, divide by the total area of your dish, and you're good. Now you will want to recalculate the area of your dish for each one of your images 
because the chances are you're not going to get your camera set up the exact same in the, all of your images, and that's going to throw off some of the um, calculations if you assumed it was the same when it wasn't. So you do want to go through this process separately for each image you have. Now, I do want to mention one other thing, uh, which is what I mentioned before, is while I went through here and I was clicking on these colonies, you can see this is kind of time consuming to click on it. Uh, this particular image, it really isn't all that time consuming just because of how great the image is. Uh, but for yours, it probably doesn't look so crisp around the edges. Uh, um, so there is another approach you can take, which is rather than clicking on each one of the bacterial colonies, to click on the empty space. And you can see clicking on the empty space, it's going to pick up really on all of the empty space. You can see little dashed lines around the colonies. So it's leaving those areas out and only giving us the area of the empty space. And then we can go to that same image analysis, uh, record measurements. And this time I get this area, which is 88,848. And that area represents the area of all of uh, the, the empty space, which I then could subtract from the area of the total dish to give me uh, the same exact measurement, just in a, a different way. So I, I do think sometimes going the opposite direction and counting the empty space areas could be a, a better approach. Uh, I probably should mention when you are doing this, uh, that very first circle you draw, as much as possible, it's it's a little bit better to try to include just the areas of the dish where it's possible to measure things in. Uh, so for instance, maybe not the total outer edge of there, but just, uh, but just that sort of inner circle. Let's see if I can get a, a better option there. That one might be a little bit better, but even the top part of that could probably be improved a little bit. Uh, again, I wouldn't worry about getting it so exact in this case. Uh, as long as it's somewhat close, it's going to be a good enough job for, for whatever project that you're working on, I would expect. Um, so that's, that's it in terms of Photoshop. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to shoot me a message uh, and let me know. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Other than that, uh, hopefully this is of help. I will see you around.